Hi, welcome to a wintry, frosty, cold afternoon in Chesterfield. Season's greetings to everybody and hopefully a new year that's going to be better than the one that uh, is about to end. Thanks a lot for everybody that subscribed to the channel. It's my first full year in the uh, YouTubing uh, game and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I've enjoyed doing the videos, I've enjoyed the comments, I've enjoyed some of the objective views and everything that people have put. And I'd like to thank you and long may it continue. If you're not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and check out some more videos online. Today what we're going to do is part two of the ANA uh, spectrometer testing. I did the basic water parameters and there's a few more that I didn't do. I've got the test kits for and now I've got a bit of time so I'm going to do the parameters. I'll probably split this one up and make it into several little videos as well on the Facebook group, uh, Facebook page. So if you don't know where that is, check out a Koi Enthusiast on Facebook and like and subscribe, not subscribe but like and check out some videos and tips on there. If you've got any questions please ask them in the comments below, put them onto the uh, Facebook page. But well, please comment, please share your thoughts and give me some ideas for some new videos. Stay tuned, we'll have a look at the water parameters and we'll do the checks. I'm going to do all the checks again uh, and do a re uh, uh, record them all for the main pond, the outdoor fry vat and the indoor fry vat. Everything's doing well at the moment and hopefully the heater is working well keeping the pond at 17 degrees. We'll check up on that later, but sit tight and follow these. Sorry if you can hear any whirring noise in the background, that's the two pumps running and probably an air pump as well. But this is what we've got, this is a HANA Aquaculture Photometer HI83303. It's the one that I did the test for and it is a very expensive piece of kit, it's not a necessity, you can comfortably get by with the Columbus or the uh, NT Lab test kits or anything like that that's got the colour slides. You can also get by with the HANA and checkers. Like I mentioned in the original video, the HANA and checkers are about between 60 and 70 pounds, depending where you get them from. And as you can see, there's eight tests that we're going to do and show at the moment. And some of these people do on a weekly basis, some of them do uh, uh, on a more frequent or even less frequent. But this is what we've got, and so what we're going to run through. We've got the pH reagent for the test of the pH. We've got the ammonia low range. We've got a dissolved oxygen. The nitrate, which is one that some people don't even bother with. We've got a nitrite low reading reagent. We have a total chlorine reagent and we have a free chlorine reagent. What we're going to do is uh, do the readings for these for all three of the ponds. But I'm only going to show you the ones that I didn't do last time on this video and that will be the chlorine reagent for the free chlorine and total chlorine, the alkalinity and the dissolved oxygen. So first thing I'm going to do is fill up the glass cuvette and start off with the three common ones. So basically each cuvette has 10 mil of pond water in there. This one I'm going to keep on the side as the uh, original to set and calibrate the unit. The rest I'm going to fill with reagents to do the individual tests. Start that in a minute. There was originally eight cuvettes but uh, when I was cleaning them out I dropped one and broke it so uh, unfortunately I've only got seven at the moment. But again, it's not a problem, just rinse it out and use again as another test. So I've just changed the angle at which the camera's looking at it, so hopefully I can get a better grip of the uh, screen. So what we're going to do next is the alkalinity. So select method, scroll down to alkalinity. Mm -hmm. 
Alkalinity Marine, Alkalinity, Plex Select. So what I'm going to do is put in the calibration vial, cuvette, and zero it. Stretch it on. So. Now we take the alkalinity pot. And what we've got in here is a little syringe. So what we need to do the alkalinity is take one mil Just curve it. Add a cap on, put the lid on, and it says invert five times. Put that in there, just there, and then click on read. The alkalinity is, sorry, press read, is 74. The next one we're going to do is chlorine free. So onto the method, scroll down to chlorine free and select. Sample in, close the lid, press zero to zero it. And then what we need to do is take a sachet Cut around the dotted line. Carefully open the sachet. Take your cuvette. Put everything in, put in a cap. Put on the lid, shake for 20 seconds. Open the lid, sample in, press timer, then wait one minute. Ideal reading, or the ideal chlorine and chloramine values in pond water should be zero. 0, 0.00 parts per million, one milligrams per litre. Chlorine has no benefit whatsoever in the pond and will only, it only cause death of the bacteria and stress to the fish, so maximum amount should always be removed. It's a good six, seven months since my cartridges in the Vier have been changed, so I'm, I'm guessing I might find some sort of traces in here. And the reading is zero. That's a bonus. The next one we're going to do is the total chlorine. So select, take the bottle, zero, that's safe. Total chlorine. So again.
the cap on. The lid on. Might do the other one. Shake for 20 seconds. Place it on there. And press the timer. Two and a half minutes. Again, for koi, the chlorine and chloramine level should be zero, as mentioned earlier. But uh, it should not exceed 0.02 milligrams per litre. It is one of the hardest things to try and check because the level is so low. Some piece of equipment and some people can't uh, read that low. But we'll see what this is going to be. And um, what we've got is 0.06 milligrams per litre. So obviously the filters need to change it in the Vier. Hopefully that'll help with that one. Okay, the next one we're going to do is another new one. This is the dissolved oxygen reagent. And in the box we have four bottles. Reagent A, reagent B, and reagent, two bottles of reagent C. The reason why there's two is, in a typical test, you use five drops of each of those and ten of those. So in the set you get twice as many of these. And it's a slight bit different to the usual test kit, as you'll see. So what we do, we take the large glass container, which holds 60ml of water. So we put the pond water in there. Now, reagent A, five drops. That's five drops of A, five drops of B. And you'll notice a big difference here. Five drops of that. Now top it up water to get the stopper in. All this is for is to remove any air. And what we do is shake the bottle and once it's been like that we leave it for two minutes. What we're looking for, I'm not sure if you can see that, is a flagulant to change, to settle. off the lid. Uh, reagent C we had 10 drops. Place the stopper. Again some more is going to drop out. Give this a shake to get all the flocculating agent to dissolve completely. And when it's dissolved completely like that, take a 10 ml sample cap on the lid and what we do is on the method go down to dissolved oxygen oxygen dissolved select cover the bottle yep. sample in zero put this in and press read and dissolved oxygen is 9.8 I think an ideal reading of dissolved oxygen in a koi pond needs to be, or should be, between 7 and 9 milligrams per litre. This is very crucial in the summer and a lot of things like the algae and the plants and the fish are using the oxygen out of the water. Uh, through the winter it's not too bad but mine's 9.8 so again I'm not going to do anything about that, leave it as it is. That concludes the uh, water parameter testing in the middle of winter, which the readings, are, they're, they're all okay, there are no, no issues in any of it, but uh, as you can see the weather's turned a little bit and this is the first bit of snow we've had of the year, albeit it's only its second, but uh, either way we've got some snow so the heater's going to be working well, the pond's nice and insulated and uh, I'll give you a quick view of the fish. They're still eating, they're still fully active and they're still growing.
So that concludes the, uh, the readings and the filming of the water parameters. I've done the inside, I haven't done the inside, I've done the outside fry vat and I've done the main pond. Not bothered with the inside one and I'll explain in the next video why that is. But uh, I say if you're still watching thank you very much for watching the videos. If you enjoyed the video please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and check out some more videos. I'm gonna get myself inside now and get dried up and have a look at this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Happy ponding.